Hi everyone, welcome to MyMax Academy. In this video, we will continue with the chapter Relations and Functions from your 12th standard CBSE Mathematics and I will continue with exercise 1.3 page number 19 problem number 10 in your textbook. Right? And the question is, the 10th question is, it says given that f is a function from x to y is an invertible function, f is an invertible function and we have to prove that f has unique inverse. We have to prove that f has unique inverse which means f is an invertible, fu invertible function so which means f has an inverse that is what is given in the question. Since f has an inverse then we should prove that that inverse function can be only one function. We cannot have two inverses for the same function. So that is what that is what it says is f has unique inverse is what we have to prove. And prove that f has unique inverse. So, we will say uh, given is, so since proof is since f from x to y is an invertible function, invertible function, so f inverse exists. The invertible function means f inverse exist. Now, we should show that uh, no uh, f has unique inverse or we will say so f has inverse f has inverse f has inverse. Now, suppose let us assume that f has two inverses. We have to, show, we have to prove that f has unique inverse. So, we will assume that suppose if f has two inverses. So, we will say Suppose, suppose if f has two inverses, say g1 and g2 are two functions which are inverses of f. Suppose if they have, we have to prove that f has one inverse. For that we will start with, suppose if it has two inverses, what will happen? So, since now, suppose if two, if, if, if g, if f has two inverses, sorry. Suppose if f has two inverses, say g1 and g2, then as per the definition of the inverse, we call g1, if g1 is the inverse of f, right? So, g1 is, so your g1 function will be from, say g1 and g2, and g1 is from the set y to x, and g2 is also from the set y to x. Right, because we are saying g1 and g2 are inverses of f. Now, now since g1 is inverse of f, g1 is inverse of f, we have since so g1 is inverse of f. So, therefore, we have uh, f of g1 equal to i of it is an it is an identity function, right? As per the definition of an inverse, if, if g is g1 is the inverse of f, then f of g is identity function. So, it will be from g1. g1 starts from y. So, i y and g1 of f that will be on f is starting from the set x. So, it is it will be from the set x to set g1 of f will be from f starting from the set this will be equal to i of f1 is f is starting from set x so i x right so if since g1 is inverse of f then f of g1 will be equal to identity function and g1 of f is also an identity function and it is why we are putting y why because g1 starts from y so f of g1 is a function from y to y and g1 of f is a function from x to x also we have g2 is inverse of f so therefore what we can say we have f of g2 right will be equal to i of again g2 is from y so y and g1 of f is also equal to ix so g2 so we have this because g2 is an inverse means f of g2 is also identity function g2 of f is also identity function but that is the definition of an invertible function what it says if f is a function from x to y is invertible, mean, invertible function means there exists a function g such that 
g of f equal to identity function and f of g equal to is also identity function. Now, now let's take these two. Let's take these two, right? Both are i y i y, right? So we have so 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 therefore what we get is f of g one is equal to f of g two because both are i y i y, right? So if you take these two, then what do we get? So which means f of g one of x. Okay, this is operating on 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 y. So y equal to f of g2 of y for every y belonging to the set y which means if this function which means f of g1 f of g1 y will be equal to f of g2 of y because f, f of g1 is equal to f of g2 means what so every element's image will be same f of g1 of y will be equal to f of g2 of y for every y belonging to the set y which means every element if f of g1 operates on an element y, you get a value and f of g2 operates on the same element y, you get another value, both will match. That is the meaning of the two functions are equal. If two functions are equal, then the images of the element are also equal. Right? Images, image of the element under these two functions are also equal because these two are equal functions. So this means now, so this means f of g1 of y equal to f of g2 of y right because f of g1 y equal to f of g2 y means what f of g1 of y equal to f of g2 of y but now y is f is an invertible function right so since f is invertible so f is 1 to 1 and not 2 f is a one to one function and on to function because f is invertible we know that any invertible function is one to one and on to so which means f is one to one so then we can say this looks like f of you take this as x1 f of x1 equal to f of x2 and f is one to one when f of x1 you, you, if you consider this as x1 this as x2 when f of x1 equal to f of x2 and f is one to one means we can say x1 equal to x2 so therefore we get g1 of y is equal to g2 of y because reason is f is 1 to 1 right f if f is 1 to 1 so which means if if we have f of if f is a 1 to 1 function f is 1 to 1 and if you see f of x1 equal to f of x2 then we can say x1 equal to x2 then we can say this this is this is always true f is a 1 to 1 function and if f of x1 so you treat this as f of x1 equal to f of x2 when f of x1 equal to f of x2, x1 equal to x2. And this is true for every y. Right? So this is true for every y belonging to y. So this is true for every y belonging to set y because f is 1 to 1. Now since g1 of y equal to g2 of y for every y means what? If if the functions, if two different functions operating on the same element that produces the same image, which means the two functions are equal. Therefore, g1 equal to g2 the functions are equal because g1 of y equal to g2 of y for every y which means g1 equal to g2 right so the two functions are equal but we started that f has two inverses and then we found that both the inverses are same there are no more different inverses g1 and g2 are only the same function because we have put g1 equal to g2 therefore f has unique inverse f has unique inverse because we assumed that x has two inverses then down the line we proved that both are same therefore what if f can have only one inverse even if it has two inverses both have to be the same function so which means inverse of f has unique inverse f has unique inverse so all of you can pause the video and take the notes fine so i will erase this this is this definition of or the contribution of one on one. So I erase that. So all of you can pause the video and take the notes. Now the next one is the 11th problem. So 11th problem is so what is given? It says f is a function from the set 1, 2, 3, 2, ABC. Fine. And then it is defined as f of 1 equal to A, f of 2 equal to B. 
f of 3 equal to c. That's how f is defined. And we have to find f inverse. So, what we should do? We have to find f inverse. So, uh, to find what do we have to find? We have to find f inverse and we have to show that f inverse whole inverse equal to x. So, first is finding f inverse. Second is f inverse whole inverse is equal to f. We have to prove this. So, we have to show that we have to first find this and we have to prove this. Fine. Right? Now, so solution. And this is we have to prove. This is to prove. To prove. We have to prove that f of f inverse of inverse. So, inverse of f inverse is f. Now, let us find f, f, f inverse. Now, so this is the function f. So, we will say this function f is 1 is going to a, 2 is going to b, 3 is going to c. So, which means f is a 1 to 1 function. Also, it is on to function because every element is getting mapped is the image of some element here. Every element here is the image of some element here. So, which means so clearly, clearly f is 1 to 1 and on to function. Why we are saying, why we are showing that f is 1 to 1 on to, so that we can say that f is invertible. So clearly f is 1 to 1 on to, therefore f is invertible f is invertible which means inverse exists. Now, let us define the function. So, we will say let us define, let us define function g, let us define function g, right, such that let us define function g. So, g is defined as the function from suppose a comma b comma c to 1 comma 2 comma 3. I am defining from this set to this set, fine. And how it is defined? G1 of G of A is defined as 1, the reverse of this. G of A goes to 1, comma G of B is equal to 2, comma G of C equal to 3. See, that is why, that is how G1, G is defined. So, G is a function from this set to this set, defined as G of A is 1, G of B is 2, G of C is 3, the reverse of this we have defined. Now, we have to show that g is the inverse of f, which means we have to prove that g is equal to f inverse. Now, to show that this function g is the inverse of f, we have to find, we have to go with this definition, right? We have to find f of g or g of f. So, what is g of f? g of f is a function from which set to which set? f is from 1, 2, 3 to 1, 2, 3. So, 1, 2, 3 set to 1, 2, 3. Then, how do we define that? Now, what is g of g of f of 1? equal to, no, for every element we have to find what is the mapping, that is equal to g of f of 1, that is equal to g of, and what is f of 1, f of 1 is a, so g of a, and what is g of a, g of a is 1. So, similarly g of f of 2 is equal to g of f of 2, that is equal to g of b, that is equal to 2, so f of 2 is b and g of b is 2, so g of f of 3 equal to g of f of 3 that is equal to g of c that is equal to 3. So, what we have got here? So, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3 means what? It is an identity function g of f of x is equal to x a is equal to i, I x or we will just say g of f is an identity function. g of x becomes identity function on the set 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. What is of g of f? g of f, g of f becomes identity function, which is g of f of x equal to x. If you want, I can write, we can write here. So, what we have got finally, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3 means your g of f of x is equal to x. So, in g of f of x is x, g of f is an identity function. So, your g of f will be equal to i of, it is operating on the set 1, 2, 3. So, we will put 1, 2, 3. So, i is an identity function, g of is, is also an identity function. So, both are equal. Similarly, if you do the reverse, right, I am doing the reverse here. So, if you do the reverse, which means f of g, f of g is a function from which set to which set. I will write it here. I will write it here only. So, f of g is a function from the set a, b, c to the set a, b, c. And let us define, now what is f of 
what is f of g of f of g of a is equal to f of g of a for every element we should say where it is going that is equal to f of g of a is 1 and f of 1 is a right so similarly f of g of b is equal to f of g of b and what is f of g of b that is f of g of b is g of b is 2 and f of 2 is b f of 2 is b by the definition so similarly f of g of c is equal to f of g of c that is equal to f of 3 that is equal to c so what we have got here also a goes to a b goes to b c goes to c means your f of g of x is equal to i of x or f of equal to x which means your f of g is also equal to identity function on which set this is on the set a b c so we will put a comma b comma c now what we have got we have got g of f is also identity function f of g is also identity function therefore i am writing the continuation here therefore g is the inverse of f g is the inverse of the function f g is the inverse of f so which means g is equal to f inverse g is equal to f inverse so we have found f inverse f inverse is what f inverse is this this function this g is the inverse of f so we have found this now we will again write since g of f is i and f of g is also i right g of f is also i if you want you can put the set below or you may not put doesn't matter so g of f is also i f of g is also i right so therefore therefore we can even say f is the inverse of g therefore f is the inverse of g see g is the inverse of f also g of f is equal to f of g both are equal to i with the same argument we can say if g of f is i then we can say f is the inverse of g see here g is the inverse of f we got g is the inverse of f right same argument we can say if g of g of f is identity function f of g is identity function we are saying g is the inverse of f this element is the inverse of f the same way we can even say f is the inverse of g the reverse is also true which means f is the inverse of g so therefore f is the inverse of g f is the inverse of g means what f is the inverse of f is inverse of what is g g is f inverse so what you have proved f is the inverse of f inverse so which means we have proved that f inverse of inverse equal to f f is the inverse of f inverse means what f inverse inverse is f so we have proved that right so therefore f inverse whole inverse is f which means inverse of f inverse is f itself so f inverse is the inverse of f f inverse is inverse of f f inverse and f is the inverse of f inverse both are true right so we can say like this f is inverse f inverse is inverse of f or we can say f is inverse of f inverse both both are one and the same both are true not both are one and the same both are true one is the inverse of other basically fine so you can stop the video and take the notes i will go to the next problem which is problem number 12 let me raise this so what problem number 12 says so problem number 12 is what we have is we have a function f given as a function f from x to y set be an invertible function invertible function now we are to show that inverse of f inverse is f inverse so this is again similar to the previous problem but here we, we proved f inverse uh, whole inverse is f for this particular function now here we have to do for any any function this is always true see this result is always true for any function that's what we are going to prove so what we are going to prove we are going to prove f inverse whole inverse equal to f the same argument we are going to do but may not be like this because here a particular function was given so we had to define a function and show that that's the inverse of the function then we we proved that 
f inverse whole inverse is f but here it is in general so here um, we will say that solution or proof whatever proof is now f is an invertible function right so f is given as the f is invertible invertible function so there exist so if f, f is an invertible function means there exists another function as per the definition of invertible function there exists another function g from the set y to x y to x such that your g of f will be equal to f is starting from x so i x and your f of g is equal to i y right and g inverse g is equal to f inverse f is invertible f is invertible function that is given which means what so there exists another function g from the reverse of this y to x such that g of f will be equal to i x and f of g will be equal to i y and g inverse is g is equal to f inverse so which means g is the inverse of f g is the inverse of f now with the same argument so also f inverse is the inverse of so same argument we can show that with the same argument we can say that see we said that g is the inverse of f right so g is equal to f inverse so same argument we can say that so also f is the inverse of g g is the inverse of f means we can also say the same argument f is the inverse of g f is the inverse of g so also f is the inverse of g why f is the inverse of g because g is the inverse of f means f is the inverse of g also f is the inverse of g so which means what so this means f is the inverse of g is what f inverse f is the inverse of f inverse what we have proved f is the inverse of f inverse which means f is equal to f inverse whole inverse so inverse of, this means inverse of f inverse means f inverse whole inverse that is equal to f that is what we have to prove so that is what we have to prove right so here we are using the same argument or the same definition to prove that one function is a inverse of other if a is a if a, if a function g is inverse of f then function f is the inverse of g that is also true so with, with that argument we have proved that f is equal to f inverse whole inverse f is equal to f inverse whole inverse or f inverse whole inverse is equal to f so all of you can pause the video and take the notes i'll go to the next one which is problem number 13 13th question is it's an mcq multiple choice question f is a function from so given is f is a function from x to y set x to set y And defined as oh sorry my mistake it's not x to y we are doing 13th question 13th question is given as f is a function from r to r given as f is a function from r to r set of real numbers to set of real numbers right given by and what is f of x f of x is defined as 3 minus x cube power 1 by 3 now what we should find find what is f of f of x equal to what f of f of x is equal to what now again so solution is now f of f of x will be equal to f of f of x correct so that is equal to that is equal to f of now what is f of x f of x is this so f of 3 minus x cube power 1 by 3 right f of f of x f of x is what f of x is the entire thing so f of instead of this f of x i am putting this right now again this is f of x now you treat this as again x and again apply on this function so this x this entire thing should be treated as this x now substitute here so which means so this becomes 3 minus x cube x is what 3 minus x cube per 1 by 3 so 3 minus x cube over 1 by 3 this is my x so I have written 3 minus x then cube x cube what I have written is x 3 minus 
3 minus x x cube it should be so x cube means this cube then whole power 1 by 3 this is clear so you have to think you you think this as x you think this as x then this is like 3 minus this whole thing is x 3 minus x cube power 1 by 3 clear so you have to treat that entire thing as x so we have to treat this entire thing as x so this entire thing is x so i have put x here so this is like 3 minus x cube power 1 by 3 3 minus x cube power 1 by 3 so you have to treat this entire thing as x and substitute here this entire value should be substituted here so you get this so that becomes 3 minus and this 3 this 3 will get cancelled you will get 3 minus x cube whole power 1 by 3 so that will become so 3 3 will get cancelled minus into minus plus x cube power 1 by 3 you will get it as x so what is your f of f of x that is equal to x so therefore the option is option c so f of f of x is x which means option c is the right answer fine so all of you can pause the video and take the notes i'll go to the next problem which is the last problem in this exercise which is the 14th problem so for in the problem what it says is f is a function 14th question is given given is f is a function from f is a function from r minus minus 4 by 3 to r defined by f of x is equal to 4x by 3x plus 4 then inverse of g is the map then inverse of inverse of f is the map is the map means is the function g from the range of f to r minus minus 4 by 3 r minus minus 4 by 3 is what is given by is given by what question mark that we have to find so which means f is a function from r minus minus 4 by 3 which means it is a set of all elements set of all real numbers except minus 4 by 3 because at minus 4 by 3 this function is not defined because if you put x equal to minus 4 by 3 you get the denominator 0 value becomes infinity so it is not a function right so therefore that is excluded to r and f of x is defined as 4x by 3x plus 4 now we have to find the inverse inverse of f is the function g from range of f to r minus 4 by 3 the reverse one from here to here range of f not not from here to here from the range of f to this range of f means all the elements which are mapped from this set to this set so the range of f is a subset of this r range of f is a subset of this r so so g is a function from range of f to this set so we have to find what will be our what will be the g set i mean what will be the g function sorry not the set it's a function now so solution is solution is g is a function from range of f to r minus minus 4 by 3 right now since so which means for any element in the range of f so since g is from range of f range of f to r minus minus 4 by 3 r minus minus 4 by 3 right since g is from range of f to r minus 4 by 3 for any y for any element y belonging to the range of f range of f if i take any element from the range of f there exists there exists some x there exists some there exists some x that will belong to this set r minus 
minus 4 by 3, right? For any y belonging to range of f, if it is range of f means what? Any element in range of f means there is some x from this edge such that f of this x will be equal to y. For some instances, such that f of x will be equal to y. Because any element that you take from range of f will be in the form, will be in the form of 4x by 3x plus 4, right? Equal to y. So now we will substitute the value of f of x, so which means y is equal to f of x, which means y is equal to f of x is what? 4x by 3x plus 4. Now whenever we want to find the inverse of the function, we have to write x in terms of y here. So you have to bring everything in the linear form and keep everything everything to the right side, move everything to the right side except x. So we should write this as x equal to something of y. So we will cross multiply. So what do we get? So if you cross multiply, you get y into 3x plus 4 is equal to 4x, then you get y into 3, 3xy plus 4y is equal to 4x. Now let's bring this x here. So you will get 3xy minus 4x or I will bring this 3xy to the other side so that it is in, in positive. So you get uh, 4x minus 3xy is equal to 4y. So which means if I take here x common, I will get 4 minus 3y equal to 4y. So you get x is equal to 4y by 4 minus 3y. 4y by 4 minus 3y. Fine. Now, now what do we have? Now we have x is equal to 4y by 4 minus 3y. So which means, which means now if we define this as g, if we define this as g, we need to find the map map of g, which means what is the definition of g. So, once you write x in terms of y, we will define g as, so let us define, let us define g as below, which means g of y is equal to 4y by 4 minus 3y. So, 4y by 4 minus 3y. Now, we cannot say, see, 4y by 4 minus 3y is there in option C, but that does not make this as, as an inverse. We need to prove that G is the inverse of F. We have to prove that G is the inverse of F. Fine. So, how do we prove that G is the inverse of F? We will have to find the G of F and F of G and we should prove that both are identity functions. Now, what is, let us now let us find what is G of F. G of F of X. What is G of F? And obviously, g of f is a function from the f set r minus r minus minus 4 by 3 to r minus minus 4 by 3. Fine. Now, what is g of f of x? g of f of x is equal to g of f of x that is equal to g of what is f of x? f of x is 4x by 4x by 3x plus 4. So that is equal to that is ignored what is g of x. Now g of x, g of y is defined as 4y by 4 minus 3y. So wherever y is there, we have to put this entire expression. You have to treat this as y. So g of y is 4 into 4, 4 into y, which is 4 into 4 into 4x by 3x plus 4, 4y by 1 minus 3y. Right? 1 minus, sorry, 4 minus 3y, 3 into y, y is 4x by 3x plus 4. So, g of y is 4y by 4 minus 3y. So, wherever y is there, I am substituting this in the function. Now, what this be becomes, so this becomes 4 4s are 16x by 3x plus 4, whole divided by this into this is 4 into 3x plus 4 minus 3 into 4x. Right? So, that is equal to by 3x minus 4, sorry, plus 4. So, they will get cancelled. So, you get 16x by, this is 12x plus 16 minus 12x. 12x, 12x, go. 16x by 16 is x. So, what we have proved? We have proved g of f of x is equal to x. 
and we have to prove the reverse. Reverse is f of g is also x. Then g becomes inverse of this. So we can say this is the answer. Right? And which is option B, which you see that is option B. So here itself we can stop. If it is a one mark, you can quickly write x in terms of y. I think you can find it. You need not give so much of explanation if it is a one mark question. Right? If it is a one mark question, you need not give so much of explanation. You can just write x in terms of y and say this is your inverse. Now f of g of f of g is a function from range of f to range of f. Range of f to range of f. So what is that range of f? So our f of g of y, any element from range of f, we are calling it as y. Right? So y will be equal to f of g of y. That is equal to f of now what is g of y? g of y is 4y by 4 minus 3. That is 4y by 4 minus 3y. So that is equal to now what is f of x? f of x is 4x by 3x plus 4. So 4 into x, x we have to, we have to put this entire value as x. 4 into x, x means 4y by 4 minus 3y, which is 4x by 3x plus 4. So 3 into x, we have to put 4y by 4 minus 3y plus 4. So that becomes 16y by 4 minus 3y by, if you multiply this, you will get 3 into 4y, 12y plus 4 into 4 minus 3y by 4 minus 3y. So this, these two will get cancelled. You will get 16 by 12y plus 16 minus 12y. Again, 16y. 12 by 12y gets cancelled. 16y by 16 is y. So what we have got? We have got f of g of y equal to y. Right? So here g of f of x equal to x, which means your g of f here, your g of f is equal to i, identity function. g of f is your identity function. So here also we got f of g of y equal to y, which means f of g is an identity function. It is identity function on this set, r minus 4 by 3. If you want, you can write in the suffix below i or you can leave it. This is range of f. So what we have got? We have got f, g of f is also identity function, f of g is also identity function. Therefore, g is the inverse of f. g is the inverse of f. So therefore, your function g of y is equal to 4y by 4 minus 3y. So this is the inverse function. This is the inverse map. Inverse of f is the map. Map means function. G and G is defined by defined by G is defined by like this. G of Y is equal to 4Y by 4 minus 3Y. Fine. So your option option B is the correct answer. Option B is the right answer. Fine. So all of you can pause the video and take the notes. And I will stop the session here. So this completes exercise 1.3. You can watch my next videos for the continuation of this. Thank you for watching. See you all in the next video. Thank you.